All right, uh, let's get started. Can we start? Uh, so welcome everyone on our talk about how Docker can help you running the tests. Uh, we will show you a bit of a cool uh, stuff what we have in our Kulian ecosystem. Uh, but before we do it, let's all agree that software is everywhere. It's not only on our computers, not only on our handhelds, it's also in our kitchen, it's also in our living room, it's actually also kind of drive our cars. And it's, all of it is written by us humans, or pretty much most of it, I believe. And we as humans tend to do mistakes. And to quote the, one of the most important computer scientists, Edsker Dijkstra, if debugging is the process of removing the software bug, then programming must be the process of putting them in. So what kind of bugs do we actually face uh, as software engineers? We can think about the bugs which are quite scary. So for example, the one which hit uh, Tesla. And uh, the problem was that the car clearance was too low. And on the highway, uh, it was uh, possible that the car can uh, take the debris from the road and actually set the car can be set on fire. So what Tesla did, they patched the software, sent it uh, over the network to all the cars and the uh, bug disappeared. Then we have another one, which is probably stressful. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, it's all good now. Yeah, we just have a problem with the screen. Okay, let's try this one. Okay. I need to go to the dish. Can, can I try the display? testing platform and docker uh, to uh, run your tests with uh, a bit of a chaos in the sense that you can uh, influence uh, your infrastructure, let it be network latency, let it be CPU or IO, okay. and see how your tests, how your services are behaving. So then you can detect the failures and let's say verify if your circuit breaker is breaking or works, or do you have a failover logic working properly, okay. this kind of stuff. So Fantastic. Try, try to run the, the show, but uh, we have a bit of technical difficulties. Okay. Okay. As software engineers, that's <laughs> the, the daily job, right? Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think our talk is, is cursed. I know, <laughs> it was working. Okay.
something out of it. This is why we want to make it still. But is it that sensitive, really? Yeah. <laughs> so how much time do we have left? You get to start from the top. Yeah, we'll start from the beginning. And besides, you'll get more people than one this yep. way. Hold on. OK. Yeah, it's cool. All right, so let's start again. Uh, we're going to talk about how to use Docker uh, for testing. And actually, we should have tested our connection before because we got a bit of a problem with the, with the display. So we're going to rush a bit. Sorry about that. We want to keep the schedule. So uh, yeah, before we dive into the demos from Mark William, let's quickly uh, agree on one simple fact that software is everywhere. It's not only on our computers, not only on our handhelds, it's also in the kitchen, in our living room, and in our cars. And most of it, if not all, is written by us humans, the developers. And we as human beings tend to do mistakes. And to quote the famous uh, computer scientist Edgar Dijkstra, if debugging is the process of removing software bugs, then programming must be the process of putting them in. So what kind of bugs can we face in our uh, daily job? There are the scary ones, uh, like the one which happened to Tesla cars, where the clearance was too low, and on the, some highways, uh, you could actually set the car on fire. So what they did, they delivered a patch over uh, uh, software patch to all the cars, and then it was fixed. Then there are the stressful ones, which happened uh, in one of the airports uh, in Paris, where they had a system for monitoring the weather and uh, reporting to the pilots about the conditions. And it was one year ago, it was still running on Windows 3.1. And all of a sudden, the system stopped working. So for a few days, they were struggling with not only routing the flights and uh, giving them a, a prompt update about the weather conditions, but they were actually struggling to find the person who could fix it for them. And then there are the funny bugs, or maybe annoying for some people, like the one which happened to a Swiss guy playing in casino in Austria. He won $57 million, but casino said that it was a software bug, and they offered him $100 in cash and a voucher for the lunch. So how we can prevent those kind of situations from happening in our, during our job? One of the most important techniques uh, which we have available are the automated tests. Uh, and if you think about automated tests, probably the most common and the most uh, used ones are unit tests. And unit tests are uh, great because they give you safety net with insanely fast feedback. And if you follow TDD practice, it also gives you a very good tool to drive your design because you as a first user of your service can think in the detail from the end user perspective how your uh, API should look like. Uh, but with all the techniques we have for unit tests, like for example mocks, uh, there are certain uh, limitations and people tend to overuse mocks uh, uh, and the, the test kind of don't give you the full picture of uh, what's going on with your software components. Uh, we can try to break it down a bit and use the sociable test so we don't mock everything we have around, but we only mock the third party services and we wire the components all together. Uh, and in this sense, we have a bit more uh, broader picture of how the interaction uh, between our components is working. Obviously, it's uh, limited in the sense of uh, still having just regular objects and still uh, having probably quite excessive setup methods. So we should do better and uh, we always need to ask ourselves, uh, are the unit tests enough? Are there any other uh, higher level tests which can help us answer the question, if our code will work on production? Do we have a confidence that when we ship our software, everything will work as intended? Or do we, do we need something better so that we can sleep uh, during the night and don't wait on the pager to come at 2 AM and run, run to the office to fix it? We as the Herculean community believe that high-level tests which are running on production-like environment give you this confidence and as a complement to your uh, presumably very broad and big uh, set of unit tests, you should also take care about writing higher-level tests which run on the production-like environment. And this is where Herculean comes to the picture. So what is Herculean? 
Our Quillian is a middleware for your test. It's not yet another application. Uh, it's not a, yet another testing framework. It's something which runs underneath and uh, takes care of all the heavyweight work to set all your uh, infrastructure components so that we fill the gap between the unit tests and integration tests uh, so that you can write your tests with ease, focus on what's relevant for the test, and forget about all the boilerplate code to set up your uh, dependencies and set up your environment, which tend to be an issue with integration tests back in the days. And we don't only support uh, we don't only support integration tests. We actually support any kind of high-level test you can think of. Let it be black box rest testing. Let it be UI tests, and so on. So the principles we had in mind when we started writing our Quillian, first and foremost, were portable tests. And what portable tests are uh, is uh, you don't have any notion of your environment setup within the test code. So as test code, so as soon as you have your test and the minimal configuration, which is not in the test itself, you can easily swap the environments or your application servers, for example, and the test will run on them without any changes in the code. The other idea we had in mind that uh, running those kind of higher level tests should be equally easy from your IDE and from your, from your build tool. So you just hit your shortcut, run tests, and then it runs exactly the same way as JUnit, TestNG, and so on. And we don't reinvent the wheel. We reuse best of breed tools. We have support for JUnit, TestNG, Spoke, and all the cool testing frameworks, and also other complementary frameworks for integration tests and UI tests and so on. And since we cannot foresee all the new cool things which will come in the future, we build it in the way that it's super flexible to adapt. So we have quite broad community which brings new tools, like for example, the one which we're gonna demonstrate it in a minute to run uh, Docker, uh, Docker tests. And we are extensible to the new platforms. We have a very flexible SPI model, so it's fairly easy for you to bring the feature which you cannot find currently in our ecosystem and just pro implement a bunch of uh, interfaces, and then you can easily leverage our Quillian platform to run your tests. And obviously, another important thing is the ease of deployment. And uh, nowadays, with Docker uh, uh, taking over uh, the container world, your deployment might not necessary, your deployment unit might not necessarily be a WAR file. It can be actually just an image. So let's see how we can leverage Docker not only to bundle our applications and ship them to production, but how we can leverage it uh, for running the tests. So in the so in the world of um, Archelian extensions, the extension that deals with the, the different the Docker, uh, the Docker files and the Docker builds and so on are, is the Archelian cube extension. What it essentially does is to allow you to, or uh, it allows you to kind of abstract away the life cycle of the Docker containers, that being the starting of them, the deploying of them, the uh, registering of them, the, the, ki the killing and removing, and also the whole build, uh, the whole build cycle of them. And it uh, works on uh, the local Docker daemon as well as OpenShift 3 and Kubernetes. Um, so, so this specific talk, we're going to focus on a very specific, particular sub um, extension of Kube again. We're seeing more and more as we go online w w with our tools, we need to be able to be offline as well. Because whenever you're out somewhere and you want to send an email and you can't because you're not online at the time. So this is where Docker Cube Q comes in, which is an um, extension that provides kind of chaos to your Docker environment. Uh, it's three different main types of chaoses. So it's the container chaos that allows you to stop, kill, and remove random uh, containers or specific ones during a test scenario. It's the uh, operating system chaos, which essentially uh, fondle with the internals of a specific Docker uh, a specific Docker container, so you can block por ports, you can burn the CPU, you can kill the I.O. and so on, to see how y the other services, for instance, uh, react to this process slowly dying. And it's the third one, which is the network chaos, where you can intercept the uh, network between the different containers to slow it down, to 
kill the connection and all those kind of interesting things to see again how other uh, services react to it. So the uh, thing we're going to show is the network chaos uh, part of it, which is based around uh, the to toxi proxy. What Cube does is to install proxies in between all the different uh, services and then gives you an API to control what's going to happen to those different endpoints. Uh, so, in the first part is you have your normal setup and then when it's been uh, cubified or toxified, whatever you want to call it, then you get the different um, proxies in between and you can, you can uh, uh, manipulate this link and you can manipulate that side of the link and all the other links that are in the system. So, uh, Cube is using Docker Compose as one of its uh, formats to configure itself. In this demo, we have a simple Hello World application that is uh, communicating with a ping pong service to get this something back. There's just two different images. There's one Java application and one um, I Python something, I believe. And when you're using Gradle, the only thing you need part of the test compile scope is the kube toxic extension and then everything else kind of gets pulled in f from there. As far as the test case, so you're injecting uh, the network chaos uh, Archelian resource. Uh, you have the option to, to inject in the host IP of the uh, Docker host or, uh, uh, or the OpenShift host. And then you can do in a, in a, um, in a closure like callback syntax, you can say that when someone is calling ping pong on port 8080, then change the latency of that network connection uh, so when when during this in internal call essentially that network will be tweaked in some way of way yes 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 uh, so let's have a look at how this looks in practice whatever my here we go so this is the example. So the first time we're just going to call it uh, uh, with no I uh, with no interruptions at all. And then we're going to set up a uh, we got yeah, okay. So so we're going to say that for 15 seconds then we're going to do a timeout thing. And for the next uh wait we're going to have a latency for the next 15 seconds as well. So we continuously execute this as fast as we can, but during the whole uh, network troubles setup. So uh, we're going to run the demo and just using the Grail daemon, uh, we'll see here that the, the Docker container starts to pop up and we should be able to see the Hyperix stats that are happening during the, the, this execution. So the, the first part is fine, it's just a, a, a executing, executing a continuous one. And then 15 seconds in, it's gonna start making trouble for that, if, for that connection. And you should see the different stats essentially uh, slowing down. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> and at this point, it's starting to get trouble w w with the latency uh, call. And no, oh, well now it's actually in the uh, stop that connection fully uh, as the circuit is open. And it's slowly shutting down the different containers and done. And that should have left us with a build success as far as our testing is concerned. Any questions around that? So this is just the uh, the uh, service that kind of counts what's happening w within that service. Uh, to so y so you can see that in the first part, uh, as far as as far as 
it's running. I oh, come on. There we go. So currently, it's counting all the individual connections within our five, uh, within our fifteen-second loop, right? And you can see that they all go green by. It's all fine. Uh, and then the latency starts to pop in, and you will see the number of requests go down essentially. And then at one point, the circuit will be open, meaning that the whole connection is heavier and gone, so it can't g get anything through, which was also kind of uh, part of part of the test scenario. And this is where it's starting to okay. There's something wrong now. It's all gone. It's dead. So it's just kind of verifying that the proxy is doing what it's supposed to do and you can see the uh, communication happening and um, yeah it's just an interesting quote in the sense that um, moving to a kind of docker environment it's not or no sorry not a docker environment to to a test to, to an auto automated test solution is not mandatory but then again it's not mandatory to uh, survive in the next world either you So, previous speaker was Bartosz, he's the Archelian lead, and I'm Oshla Knudsen, the Almighty lead. So, that was all for us.